Production schedules narrated by Julie Larson. This is Unit 7. When figuring out production schedules, one of the first things you want to look at and determine is your marketing strategy. So who will you be selling to? Are you going to be going to farmers markets? Well, those start certain times of the year. Um, are you just going to have customers come out to your farm? Then you want to make sure you always have some product available for them. Uh, are you going to be selling fresh or frozen? Uh, farmers markets, Illinois, you can always sell frozen. So you have a much longer turnaround time as opposed to your market wanting fresh food, uh, fresh meat. Uh, then you're going to have to have a pretty quick turnaround time. Um, also, what seasons? Uh, in order to do your scheduling, you're going to have to think about you know certain ethnic holidays where they um, want certain cuts of meat. Uh, Easter, when people want a lot of eggs. Make sure that you have enough product at that time. Uh, quantity, how much are you going to need if you're doing five markets or ten markets? Or uh, if you're also going to be selling to restaurants or uh, small grocery stores, what are they going to require from you? And lastly, when you're doing your marketing strategy, you're going to need to determine whether you want uh, feeder animals versus breeding. Because the, your scheduling uh, for the feeder animals is, you know, when you buy your animals at, uh, from wean, the time they're weaned till the time that they're ready for uh, harvesting, is a, much more, is a much shorter time than if you're going to be uh, having a whole breeding system, uh, production system that includes breeding. So uh, those have to be taken into account also. How you're going to market your animals if you are going to say that they are, you know, raised on your farm and you, uh, um, you know, you do have a breeding system. Uh, maybe your customer base will really like to hear that and that will be an important thing to them. So all of those ideas have to be uh, worked out uh, in order to, to really start doing your production schedule. So if you're using feeder animals, and we're talking about day-old chicks or weaned lambs and goats that are very young, uh, there's a few things that you need to consider when you're lining up your production schedule. Will you be able to get the quantity that you need? So, of course, you first need to figure out how many you need. And will the number that you need be available when you need them? So you're going to need to go to the breeder and uh, make sure you have all that lined up that they will be able to provide you with the number that you need. And secondly, is that breeder going to provide you with animals that uh, will have a reliable growth rate? So. Uh, if you've never used them before, uh, you want to make sure that those animals are healthy in good condition when you do purchase them. And uh, you would look at the breeder, uh, the mother and father, make sure that they're the size that you require or want for your final carcass hanging weight. One thing that's important when you're doing your farm plan uh, that fits into your production scheduling is that you need to be sure you're ready for the record keeping. So be sure that you have ear tags on hand, uh, that you are keeping track of all your feed receipts so you can uh, keep track of how much each one is being fed and the cost that that is going to entail. Uh, you want to, if you're going to be doing vaccinations, you need to keep that all uh, in a worksheet or someplace you have access to that. Also, a worming schedule. It's important to have all those uh, sheets ready to go so when your animals do arrive, you're, you have something to put all that information in and keep track of. As part of your scheduling, 
you're going to have to uh, include some of the general maintenance that goes into uh, the jeep, uh, sheep and goat production is what we're talking about here. Uh, as far as hoof health, will they need to be, uh, will the hoofs need to be trimmed? Will they need to be sheared? Uh, will worming need to take place? Um, you have uh, things that need to be done uh, during pre-breeding, also pre-lambing and kidding time. There's things that need to get done. So that all needs to get be incorporated into your production schedule and very important if you are breeding animals. If you are going to be breeding uh, your replacement stock and also the animals that you'll be taking to the processor, uh, in your production scheduling, you'll need to keep track of uh, things going back even two to six weeks before you plan to have the ram and the ewe together. So you need to look at the ram or the buck health. Uh, is he in good shape? Because the breeding season is going to take a lot out of him, so make sure he's in very good condition. Many rams and bucks uh, don't eat very well while they are servicing the girls. Uh, do you have enough ewes or does for production? Uh, maybe you do need to purchase um, a few to um, fulfill that production schedule. Uh, vaccinations, what vac vaccinations you'll be doing at what times. Uh, worming is very important before they get bred. Uh, you also, you want uh, maybe if necessary, you do what's called you flush the females, which is you increase your nutrition to increase the ovulation rate. And most of the time, this is done with an increase in grain uh, in calories. So, uh, if you need to do that, you need to look at those and include those into your scheduling. So once your animals have been bred, uh, now you're going to wait the five months until lambing and kidding begins. But there's some things you're going to have to do before uh, the five months are up. So six weeks before, make sure you have a very clean environment inside a building. So if the weather turns bad on you, you have some place to take them in. Make sure you have all your birthing supplies ready. Um, your iodine, uh, all the things that, that would be needed, have them handy, up to date, make sure everything's, uh, none of your things are out of date, uh, and have them ready to go in a bucket. Uh, you want to make sure all of your animals, females, are in good condition. Uh, so if they're a little bit on the thin side, Maybe increase their grain a little bit or have better nutritional hay. Uh, put them out on some nice grass uh, because uh, you want to make sure they're in good condition uh, once they have to start um, nursing. Shear all the fur away from their face, their udder, and their tail to make sure that there's no tags hanging for the little ones to nurse on or uh, suckle onto any of the... Uh, Tags around the tail, around the udder. You want to make sure that that's clear and able for them to get right on the teeth. As part of your production scheduling uh, during lambing kidding season, one main thing is you want to be available. So be sure that you don't have any plans to go out of town or your work schedule isn't going to be such that you need to be uh, away from uh, your uh, pregnant lambs for very long. They will need to be checked periodically throughout the day. Um, so you want to set up uh, your lambing jugs or a separate place for them to bond. Just a small enclosure just for a day or two to make sure that the moms and the babies uh, know each other that the, uh, that the little ones are uh, getting enough to eat. So you're going to have to check the babes at least three times a day for full bellies. And then the male, the males will need to be castrated by two weeks old. So be sure you have the time to do all that. 
yeah, that should be incorporated into your schedule. Poultry is looked at a little bit differently because more than likely you will not be hatching out your own chicks. Um, maybe you will be. Maybe you do enjoy uh, hatching out and have the facilities to be able to do that. Most of the time, though, you'll get your chicks as day olds. So when you're looking at a production schedule, you need to think about for Cornish cross broilers, five to eight weeks. Uh, most of the time, six weeks is fine from the day you get them until they're ready to go to the processor. Um, if you're going to be doing eggs, uh, you're going to want to start those four to five months uh, before you're going to need those eggs. Turkeys, they take about 16 weeks to finish. Uh, so if you're going to be doing a lot for Thanksgiving, make sure you're uh, thinking about the processor, which gets very, very busy about this time. And also that uh, those four months before, uh, you have uh, everything in place for those four months. Ducks are short in time, so six to eight weeks from the day olds until they go to the processor. I recommend using the calendar method to figure out your production scheduling. So if you have a, a 12 month calendar, yearly calendar, you're going to look at there, uh, what day do you need the product? So if you're going to be doing farmers markets, many of them begin uh, middle of May into the very beginning of June. Uh, we're just talking about summer outdoor markets. Um, so if you're going to be doing, uh, and then you're thinking about doing lamb, then they matured about six months. You hope they'll be about 125 pounds. Uh, so you need to count back. So five months back from June will get you to, they should be born December. But what about processing? You have to make sure that you leave time for the processor to get that done. So maybe you would have to um, leave a month for that just to make sure that you got the scheduling and the dates accurate and up to date. So that leaves you that they would have to be born in November. Uh, so you would have to find a breeder who could supply you with the number that you needed in November. And that then that's when your production schedule will begin the day that you acquire the animals. If you're doing breeding, of course, you would go back even further to uh, include all of the duties for the ewe uh, and the time up until lambing. So then you fill in all the recommended uh, things you need to do, the times for vaccinations and the worming. Um, you would highlight the duties uh, that need to get done, such as uh, if you need to do trim hooves, uh, you also may include that, that processing date. Uh, and I would suggest doing a separate calendar for different birthing groups. If you are going to be doing uh, lamb for the Easter market, now those will have to be Easter's generally the end of March, beginning of April. So now you're going to have to be uh, finding uh, uh, maybe some of those early born lambs will uh, be born in December and you can call some of those and use them for the um, Easter market uh, and then the rest of them you can finish out to start with the farmers markets. Unless you are doing a small quantity and going to be processing for yourself and not planning to sell any of the products uh, you will need to uh, incorporate the processing times for uh, all of your products. And this is very important. So you need to talk to the processor you're going to be using and uh, bring up the, the projected harvesting dates that you need. Make sure that those times are going to jive with uh, their times. Try and get a schedule, if at all possible. If you are doing lambs, uh, older lamb and goat, you're probably going to need some hanging times, which helps to tenderize the meat. Your processor can help you with those, figuring out those times and dates. And then what also is his turnaround time? Uh, you know, if, if you're going to try and do a bunch of lambs um, when deer season is happening in the fall, 
and he does a lot of uh, deer, you might have some trouble getting in. So all things that need to be talked to uh, and over with your processor. Production, production scheduling seems as though it's really very detailed and time eats up a lot of time, but there are some key reasons that having an accurate or close to being accurate pro production schedule can help are uh, in these ways. Uh, you're better able to market your product because you're going to know when it's available and how much you're going to have. Uh, you can supply your market giving, uh, giving and getting the best prices uh, uh, when you know how much you're going to have at certain times. Uh, and you always have product available. There's nothing worse than running out of, um, you know, sausages when it's grilling season or you have so many people who want to buy your turkeys and you, only, you have not figured out how to produce all those. Um, and really the fat last thing that's super important for all of this when you're doing animal products is that you have the refrigeration required to make this whole schedule work. Because if you're coming back from the processor with 300 chickens and they need to be frozen for market, do you have the freezer capacity to manage that? So uh, the production schedules can really help you with your entire farm plan to get your customers the best product possible.